Welcome to Straight Out of Scripture, a nod to my West Coast roots and a daily dive into who God is and to who we are in Him. Today we're going to discuss a new way to look at one of my favorite biblical stories. I recently heard a sister in Christ share her perspective on this story from a new way that I hadn't heard before and it really changed the way that I interpreted this story. So as we know, life can be tough. Sometimes it feels like we're stuck in a whirlwind of pain, confusion, and endless questions. In those moments, we might wonder, why is this happening to me and why do good people suffer? Today, I want to share a different angle on a story that you might already know, which is the story of Job. But we're not just going to look at Job as a guy who suffered. We're going to take a look at him as God's chosen representative, a man who was trusted to carry the weight of something far bigger than himself. And maybe, just maybe, that perspective can help us see our struggles in a new light. So let's start at the beginning. Job wasn't some random dude. He was handpicked by God. And when Satan came strolling into the heavenly council, God pointed at Job and said, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one like him on the earth. Now, let's think about that for a second. God chose Job to represent his kingdom. Job was God's best example of what it means to live a faithful life. This wasn't about God setting up Job to fail. No, this was about God's confidence in Job's character. God believed that Job could withstand whatever came his way, and in doing so, he could show the world what true faith looks like. Let's really take a second to take that in. Now, I know if you're anything like me, you're probably saying to yourself, being chosen to suffer is not a prize, right? But here's the thing. Job's suffering was never about punishment, it was about purpose. His pain wasn't meaningless. It was actually a cosmic statement because Job's life became a battlefield where the very nature of faith was being tested. And I mean for real, we all know what Job went through. So Job's trials were proving to the world and to the spiritual forces watching that real faith isn't just about what God can do for us, it's about who God is to us. Job's life became a loud, resounding statement that I trust God even when I don't understand him. And how many of us can relate to that now in this moment? What is also powerful here is that Job was given the honor of representing something bigger than himself. It wasn't that God didn't care about Job's pain. It was that Job's faith had a purpose that stretched far beyond his own life. It was like God was saying, Job, I believe in you and I trust you to show the world that faith isn't just about blessings, it's about relationship. Like being chosen doesn't always mean comfortable. Sometimes being chosen means being set apart for a unique mission. Sometimes it means isolation and sometimes it means leaving everything that you know behind. And Job's mission was to show that God is worthy of worship even when the blessings are gone. So this leads us to one of the most profound parts of Job's story, his role in exposing the enemy's lies. Satan's entire argument was that people only love God because of the good things that they get. But Job, enduring what he did without cursing God, let everybody and a mama know that that was all cap. Job's life, even in its messiest, darkest moments, declared that God's kingdom isn't built only on give and take. It's built on love, trust, and commitment. Job's suffering became a powerful statement that faith doesn't depend on circumstances. It depends on knowing who God is. You know what I love even more about this story is that Job's life actually foreshadows the ultimate kingdom representative, Jesus Christ. Just as Job suffered without cause and held on to his faith, Jesus suffered on our behalf as well. Job's story really echoes the greater story of redemption that shows us that sometimes God's chosen representatives are called to endure hardship for a bigger purpose, and they don't often see it. So take a step back from your circumstances and try to see the bigger picture. Job's journey wasn't just about his loss. It was about what his faith accomplished in the unseen spiritual realm. He stood as a symbol of unbreakable faith, and that's something that we can draw strength from today. So what does this mean for us? It means that even when we're going through tough times, maybe it's not about what we've done wrong. Maybe it's about what God is doing through us. I know for myself that in this time um, that I'm leaving my wilderness season and entering my waiting period, that he is restoring relationships around me. And I believe he's doing this at this select time so that more people can witness what he is about to do through my life. God might be trusting us with a role that goes beyond what we can see, our struggles could be a stage for God's power, faithfulness, and love to be put on display. Job's story isn't just about enduring pain, it's about being part of something much bigger. It's about trusting God to hold on and to keep believing, even when everything is falling apart. 
So if you're in a season of struggle right now, remember Job. Remember that he was chosen, not abandoned. His pain had purpose, and so does yours. You are God's representative too. Living out of faith that speaks volumes to those around you, even if you don't realize it. God believes in you, just like he believed in Job. And he sees your tears, he hears your questions, and he knows your struggles, and he is not absent in them. As a matter of fact, he's right there with you, rooting for you, saying, hold on, you're a part of something bigger. So take heart because your story isn't over. And just like Job, you are part of a kingdom that is unshakable, even in the darkest times. Your faith is making a difference, not just in your life, but in ways you may never see. You are chosen, you are seen, and you are loved. So keep rising, keep believing, because God is using you to represent his kingdom right here, right now. I hope you guys enjoyed the Straight Out of Scripture segment, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. God bless you.